plus your pupil. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we, uh, thank everybody for their patience and tolerance. Welcome to the uh, quarterfinals of the 2022 Lance Panel Snooker Tournament. And on behalf of the Victorian Billions and Snooker Association, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's associated with the organisation of this event because they've done a brilliant job. Thank you very much, George Lloyd. Um, really, that's been a very, very good performance as tournament director. He's also hounded a number of people to make sure they entered, so we've had enough numbers, and that's been great. Um, we are live streaming, and I'd like to thank all the players who were here promptly and ready to play, but we've waited until the stream has been able to go. So on this table here, we will have Charlie Chafe playing against James Wifford, Gardner Gray will be looking after that match. On this table here, Saraf Kathari from India will be playing against Kale Barrett from Tasmania. So both overseas visitors, <laughs> and uh, that will be looked after by Andrew Trafi. On this table over here, Peter Gilchrist uh, is playing against Joel Yaka, and Belraj will be looking after that for us. And on this table over here, we have uh, Steve Wifford and Ayaz Khan, both from Victoria. So there's a way that we'll guarantee we'll get Victorian through to the next round, and that'll be looked after by Neil Ellison. I thank everybody for being so prompt. I hope everyone enjoys themselves. The frames and matches are best of five. Enjoy yourself, and I'll leave you in the hands of referees. Just, just one other thing, gentlemen. Uh, there will be a break after the quarterfinal if you'll have a lunch break, uh, and then we'll start the semis. When the, the last person finishes their quarterfinal, one hour after that person finishes their quarterfinal. All right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Good morning everyone and welcome to the Revington Snooker Academy it's Sunday morning, cold day in Melbourne. We're just watching the beginning of the game with Steve Mifsud playing Ayaz Khan. It's the first scoring visit by Steve, he's just got to the table. At the moment he's on a, a small break of 17, the balls are in a good position to to make quite a substantial break here as a first visit. For those uh, you are listening who don't know Steve, he's one of the top players in Australia, has been for a number of years now. 
He's no stranger to many tournament victories, not just here or in Australia itself, but, um, overseas. He was a former IBSF World Snooker Champion back in 2002. A former professional player for many years as well on the English tour. He has a high break of uh, the maximum possible 147 points and I believe he's achieved that in excess of five times. And currently he's on a break of 33. He's going to attempt to pop the black into the corner and split the reds. That didn't come off quite that well for Steve, but Ayaz has a chance at that long red down into the green pocket. So Steve's opened up a handy lead of 33 points at this stage. But it's early days yet in this first frame and a best of five. So first of three frames will progress through to the semi-finals. Where they wait the, the winner of either Peter Gilchrist or Joel Younger. Which their match is currently underway as well on one of the other tables. Ayaz has just attempted that long ball. He's caught the jaw of the pocket. He's let Steve in again for another chance to increase his lead. Well. Having known Steve for years and years, he looks like he's in a, a good frame of mind to play good attacking snooker. Looks quite relaxed around the table. <laughs> the shot he will play for here. He's got an option to play into the pack off the cushion, but I believe he'll just play for the. Hopefully, to get that red in the middle. He may have tried to split the pack there off the off the pink ball, but nevertheless, he's um, run into ideal position to drop the red into the middle and then attempt to split the reds again off the blue. He's probably just fallen a little bit short to take the blue into the middle, so he's going to attempt the yellow with the same shot as he did on the green beforehand. Try and come off the side cushion into the pack of reds, which he's done, now he just needs a good result. And that looks quite good from there. opened up a 40 point lead. He may have a little bit too much angle to hold the white ball for the black here. It may be possible just to stun off the cushion and go back up for the blue or one of the bolt colours, the yellow, the green or the brown. So Steve's just a little bit unsure of the position where he wants to leave the white here. I think he is going to play it, stun off the cushion up for the, the middle of the table. He's played it quite a bit harder. I think it was more a shot to nothing, which basically means you should you miss the red ball, um, chances are you're going to leave the the opponent not much on the next shot. It's a, a, more of a, a safety. But he's potted that. He's still in command of the table. He's got the option here to play a long yellow into the corner pocket. Or he can just drop the white ball behind it and leave Ayaz in a snooker, which he's done exactly that. And it's probably the right shot to play too. He wants to make sure that Ayaz doesn't have an opportunity to come back and get back into this frame. And, you know, pinch it. 
So it's not a difficult snooker to get out of, but he just has to hit it right where he doesn't leave Steve an opportunity to pot another red ball and potentially win the frame off this next visit. So this shot's pretty important for Ayaz. He has to play this pretty, pretty well perfect. For those of you that uh, don't know Ayaz, he hails from Pakistan. He's been out, <clears throat> he's lived in Australia for approximately seven and a half years now. He's, he's a member of this particular club at Yarraville. So he's quite used to the tables. Um, that one there probably didn't go as well as he expected. He's let, let Steve in for that opportunity, hopefully for Steve to close out this frame. Take a one nil lead into a best of five. shot there probably hasn't worked out um, any better for Steve. He's landed perfectly on the black with a slight angle to pick and choose whichever red that he wants to take on next. Steve's looking quite ominous around the table. He's in full control. Simple roll through to the black ball. So, Pots of black in, he's 57 points in front and there's a possible 65 points left on the table. So potentially he needs one more red ball with another colour to make the frame safe. Pink in the middle, which will open up a 64 point lead with 59 points left on the table. Steve's probably just fallen a fraction short on the pink ball there. I'm sure he would have liked to have been a little bit straighter on the pink just to roll through for the red ball. But I can't see this is going to be too much of a burden for him, the shot which he's clearly indicated. And he's back in prime position. So he's, he safely won the frame, providing this red goes in, which it, it does. Now it's just a matter of seeing if he can um, clear the table from here, which I've seen him do personally many, many times before, so I don't see it's an issue. And it's just at the same time he's getting used to the the speed of the table, the cushions, the conditions. It's never easy just to walk into a first frame of a tournament and start knock, knocking all the balls in one by one. Steve can do this by the hours and days and years of practice that he's done on the on the tables. So it's just another day at the office for him. Break of 38 at the moment, the frame is well safe. He's got a possible 43 points left on the table if he takes these two reds to blacks. But he's just going to play the percentages. He's got a few options here, depending on the angle on the brown. He could possibly stun the brown off the side cushion. However, it doesn't seem to be possible. It looks like he's going to take the green off two cushions and come back around between the blue and the pink to land on the red, which he's done quite well. So 
So this is a very good start for Steve. Quite a quick frame. Ideally, he probably would have liked the, the pink to land a little bit closer to the middle pocket there, but nonetheless, the frame's safe. So he's, still, he's still got the, the chance to, to knock this ball in and clear the table. So the break ends at 43. And I can't see Ayaz getting up off his chair, which that is the case. He has conceded that first frame. So it opens up a 1-0 lead for, for Steve in this best of five at the Lance Panel Snooker Championship. We'll be back for frame two shortly. Welcome back to frame two. There's no score at the moment in this frame. Uh, Steve has taken a 1-0 lead in the match, a best of five. And we're at the quarter-final stage of the Lance Panel Snooker Championship. And we're playing at the Revington Snooker Academy in Yarraville in the city of Melbourne. 
good conditions for snooker. The weather outside at the moment in Melbourne is about 9 degrees, so the conditions in here are quite good. All the players have been happy with the conditions of the tournament and the condition of the tables, the venue. It's always a good place to, to play at the, the Yarraville, at the snooker club. We have another three matches going on at the same time. The quarterfinals, all best of fives. As we see Ayaz pop the blue into the middle pocket. Um, hoping to get onto that red just above the black ball to the right. He may have left himself a little bit too much angle. You might have to rely on just a little bit of luck to get on, a, on the colour here, which he hasn't brought the white ball back enough. I think it would be the right decision here, maybe just to play a safety shot, leave the white in a position where Steve's not going to be able to, to pot a red ball. Which he's done exactly that left it as close to the cushion as possible, making that shot just that little bit more difficult. There's a couple of options here that Steve could play. There's the red on the, the left side of the pack, which it's possible that it will pot down into the, the yellow pocket, down in the other end, where if you're not familiar with the snooker terms, that's where Ayaz is currently sitting at the moment, the top left of screen. I don't believe Steve will attempt to pot that. It's not a high percentage shot, but he will be looking for just a, a good safety shot to leave Ayaz no opportunity to, to score off his next visit. And Steve's just neatly run into the pack so there's no chance for where the, the red balls lie that Ayers can score from this shot. So we're in a position in the frame at the moment that both players are just trying to be careful, trying to avoid making a mistake and, and letting the other opponent in to open up a, a scoring lead. Similar shot here as well too. Steve's not going to take on any any rash shot. Ayers has given him the opportunity to just play that red where the green was. However, he's probably hit that a little bit softer than he wanted to. He would have liked to have not given Ayers the chance to pop this red. And he's played a very good shot there. And in addition to that, it looks like he's developed the black ball. He's got a lucky, lucky kiss off the black ball. And he's got an opportunity to sink the black into the middle pocket, which should take him around the same side of the table for an option at one of those reds, possibly in the corner pocket. So we've got Ayaz and his first scoring opportunity in this match so far. And this is probably a good chance to see what sort of a player he is around the table, his demeanour, his confidence. And I think once, once he gets a few more reds and coloured balls, he'll start to feel a bit more comfortable. He just looks a little bit edgy at the moment. But he's got a, a great opportunity here to, to knock in a few more colours. Just keeping his poise. 
opened up a handy little break, 21 points. And again, it's still only the start of the frame, so there's still a lot of work to do to make this frame safe. But as I mentioned earlier, he's a, he's a local, he's a member of the, the Yarraville Club. So he's used to these conditions, which can have quite a big advantage as well. Of the black into the corner pocket. Unfortunately, that red has just fallen a little bit too far from the middle pocket, which would have been ideal to continue the break. He may have an opportunity with the red ball at the top of the pack into the yellow corner pocket. However, I think it's a quite a risky shot from there to do that. And this is where experience counts. You weigh up your options. Is it worth having a go at this? Risk versus reward. It looks like he is going to play this red into the yellow pocket. And that's a really good shot. 23. He's played that perfect. And he's got a, a nice angle to pop the black in, continue the break. It's the two reds out in the middle of the table. See another nice shot there off the black from Ayaz, which he's opened up a, a 37 point lead. He's currently on a 30 break. So it looks like we could be in for quite a good match here. Both players appear to be settling in. And in the best of five, in such a, a short frame match, you need to be on your game from, the, from your first shot. Ayaz has left himself in a position here where he could pop the blue. However, he's not guaranteed a position. So the white ball will cannon into the pink ball. So he's going to attempt to pop the blue just to get that five, five points extra. And he's hoping for a good, good kiss. Now, unfortunately, he probably just rushed that a fraction, which has left the blue over the pocket. Nevertheless, good break of 37 by Ayaz. However, with Steve coming back to the table, after the first frame, he looks quite confident. Um, he will start this visit now with potting the red ball, and he's got the, the blue straight after that. by Ayaz may be quite costly in the next five minutes if Steve continues from his first frame. And the calibre of players like Steve and the other seven that are in the, in the quarterfinals of this tournament, you don't want to give them the opportunity to, to get in and get their eye in because once they get a, a sniff of victory, they are very, very hard to stop. And Steve's proved that year after year, even as a teenager. He had the ability to dominate a game. And as we see that he's potted the pink, he's gone into the pack. He's probably been a bit unlucky there that the white ball stuck on top of those two reds, which has 
basically ended the break for him. Now in this situation, the referee's just had a look. He's called a touching ball, which means the white ball is touching one of the red balls. So the rules are that the player does not have to... Okay, so I've just been informed that he may have slightly struck the red ball with his cue, which the rules state that you're not allowed to hit the, the coloured balls with, with the tip of your cue, so in a sense that's a, a foul shot. So he's uh, awarded four points to Ayaz. So the break finished, Ayaz is back on the table. He's probably had a little bit of a reprieve there with, with Steve just losing position on that break because it potentially could have been a, another frame winning break and a, and a 2 0 lead, which is very handy in a best of five. Um, Ayaz has attempted the long red there. He's, he's left Steve another opportunity to get back in and should he attempt to drop this red into the middle and succeed, um, that may be the last shot that Ayaz has for this frame as well. But I believe Steve's going to play the percentages. He's not going to attempt this. He's going to play the safety shot. And that's, that's a great shot that he's played there. It doesn't appear that Ayaz has the opportunity to pop that red, nor does he have an easy way of leaving Steve with no shot. So he might just try and compose himself a little bit here, not to rush into this shot. He's attempted to just put the white as close to the, the top cushion as possible. However, there is an opportunity for the red ball to be potted into the middle pocket, which I believe Steve may have a go at this. There doesn't appear to be much other option other than to play safe off that red near the green. And I think that he's doing that. I'm guessing because of the, the score line at the moment, Steve being 35 points down at this stage. <clears throat> he doesn't want to give Ayaz another scoring opportunity. Yeah, so this is a big shot for Ayaz. He needs to pop this in for his confidence. Again, we see Steve with, left with a, a couple of options. There's a possible red ball into the right centre pocket that he could drop in. It is a risky shot as well. Having said that, the risk versus reward. Should he, he pop that in, he's back on. He's back on the table. He's got an opportunity to at least catch up in the frame. Or Steve being Steve, he could quite easily finish the frame on this visit. He just overhit that a fraction and over the top of the wide ball. And this is probably the perfect opportunity for Ayaz if he can hold his nerve here. With a couple of reds and colours, he could almost make the frame safe here to make it a one all one all match. So it appears that the red ball next to the green will go into that pocket. The pot's not that difficult, but he needs to 
ensure that he gets good position on the next colour, which he has done. has probably just hit that a little bit further than what he intended to do however he's lucky that the red ball looks like it appears to go into the middle pocket which if he if he knocks this in he stays on the pink or he can elect to take the blue and he's got another red waiting for him in the middle pocket once he does that I believe this should be the frame winning visit for Ayaz to level the match at one ball. However, I must have put the mocker on him. He's missed that. And as you can see by his reaction, it's, he's not that happy. And now the opportunity for Steve to get back into this second frame and possibly create a 2-0 buffer. So the big shot here is to try and get the, the, the white ball, the cue ball, back around towards the red. Into the corner pocket. So that bottom red ball appears to be on. However, the white ball he would have liked to have just gone away from the cushion a fraction more makes the shot a little bit more difficult if you haven't got your hand on the actual table itself. However, he's played that very well. He's cannoned into the other red, and he's opened, up, opened that up for an opportunity to finish the frame. And now, as we'll see, this is all about holding your nerve. Steve's probably cleared the table with one or two reds left thousands of times over his lifetime in practice and in competition and it's just a matter of doing it again trusting your action trusting your experience just feeling comfortable with your own game just a quick check of the scoreboard currently 30 points behind. There is 35 points left on the table if he pots the red and uh, the black ball as the colour with the 27 points left once all the reds are gone. However, he only needs either a green or, a, or better to clear the table and pinch the frame on the black ball. Won't be any problem potting the blue ball. Now it's just a matter of holding that nerve to get that prime position, which he's done that. And he's played a perfect shot just to nudge the brown out the way to pot the yellow. And Steve is looking very relaxed. He, he would love to pinch this frame to make a 2-0 buffer for himself with three to play. He looks well in control of the table. Ayaz will be ruining that opportunity that he, he missed that a couple of shots in that frame. Yeah, Steve's probably overhit this ball too much. Where he can pot the blue without any, any trouble. However, he's going to leave himself with a, a tricky pink. And again, this is just about holding your nerve, going through the process that you've done over the years. Yeah. 
and played that perfect. And you can see it in his confidence as well. This will go once he pots this. And he's pinched that frame. So you can see he's quite relieved. He's come from a quite a big deficit behind the frame too to pinch it on the black ball. And two nil up. So we'll take a short break and we'll be back for frame three shortly. Welcome back to the 2022 Lance Panel Snooker Championship. You're listening to Andrew Hicks. We're watching currently Steve Mifsud and A.S. Khan in the quarterfinals. Steve's just opened up a 2 0 lead in this best of five match. He made a good comeback last frame, with 40 odd points behind. Unfortunate miss by A.S. Gave Steve the opportunity to get back into the match and he took advantage of that and, and made a handy 40-something clearance to pinch that last frame. We're at the opening of frame number three. We'll see if he has can summon up the experience that he has over the years of playing not just here but in Pakistan where he, he grew up. A, um, moved over to Australia seven years ago. I should mention too, Pakistan in snooker. Pakistan is, uh, snooker is a very popular sport over there. Had a, a number of top players coming out of the country. Even in the 1994, the Pakistani Muhammad Yusuf, he took out the IBSF World Snooker title in South Africa. And we've recently, on the professional tour, been a Pakistan player who has qualified for the main tour so it's it's great to see a lot of different nationalities playing this sport now he has had a has so far had a good tournament he went through the round robin groups only losing one frame and winning all these matches uh, yesterday's knockout stages in the last 32, he defeated Henry Lau in a close match, which was three frames to two. And it looks like in his last 16 match, he's played one of the, the top-ranked Australian players as well, in Sean Dallitz, and he's he's beaten Sean 3-0. So that should have given him quite a lot of confidence into this match. However, it's a different ball game when you're playing someone of Steve's calibre. And 
for those of you who are listening as well, the other matches, the three other quarterfinals that are currently on the other tables at the club. We have Surav taken a, a one nil lead over Kale, Kale Barrett. Charlie Chafe has a one nil lead over James Mifsud. And Peter Gilchrist from Singapore, he has a one nil, one nil lead over the former Australian professional Joel Younger. All of those players that I mentioned, they're all possibly capable of winning the tournament. And I believe James has just levelled the match with Charlie and made it one all. So as we get back to this game here. Steve has played a lovely shot into the into the yellow pocket, a long red off the cushion, which has landed him perfectly on the black. Now the, the confidence that he's got over the last two frames, um, I can see this could be pretty ominous for Ayaz. He may not get another opportunity to get back into the match if, if Steve opens up a, a good lead here. pink ball obviously goes into the middle pocket which he's knocked in accordingly and left himself good position to the next red so as we see the pink ball has been spotted not on its spot and the reason for that is that the red balls at the top of the pack there are obstructing the spot so in snooker it goes on the next highest available spot which is the blue ball and the blue ball being worth five points and the pink worth six hence the pink ball has gone onto the blue spot but you still get the six points for it As he pots the blue here, this is a, another little conundrum about our game of snooker. The blue won't spot onto any spots because they're all covered. So it basically goes in line, in line with the spots from the brown ball to the black ball, from the top of the table end. And I explain the top of the table end, it's actually at the bottom of the screen. Where the black ball is, it's referred to as the top end of the table. Blue and the pink are basically together, but the referee, he spots it as close as possible to the, the other ball without touching the other ball. So we're talking probably a, a millimetre or, or as close as possible without it rocking onto the, the other coloured ball. So in this scenario here, it appears that the blue and the pink, either of them should go into the, the middle pocket. Here's that Steve's electing to take the, the pink ball off the cushion. And he has a good result there. He's probably landed on either red. So depending on the angle of the red in the, in the middle pocket, he may find that that's quite easy to drop in and land on the, the blue or the pink again. Or he might take the one between the green and the brown. and just bring the white around the cushions and land on one of the, the lower coloured balls, the, the yellow, the green or the brown, which are worth two, three and four points respectively. So still quite a bit of work to do in this frame for Steve to get over the line, but he has left himself in a great position here, an opportunity to play the blue and play the white ball into the pack and hopefully get a result, land on a red ball to continue the break. 
there's always a little bit of, of luck or an element of luck when you go into the pack like that. You're unsure where the reds are going to, to end up or the white. And red might drop into the pocket, which means that it's a foul shot and Ayaz would be back onto the table to take advantage of it. From where Steve's left, he's probably just a little bit unlucky there that he hasn't landed in a, a prime position as such. So I think his option here, he's going to look for a, a good safety opportunity just to stop Ayaz from getting back into the frame. And still only early days, it's only a 25 point lead. There's still plenty of points left on the table. And having, having knocked the pack of the reds everywhere, the blue was able to be spotted back onto the pink spot, obviously because the pink ball is spotted onto the blue. So therefore, it goes onto the highest possible spot. He's just going to run the white ball off the cushion around the back of the red ball just to leave it nice and safe. There's no chance of Ayaz scoring from this shot. And now it's just a matter of a little bit of a safety battle until one player makes a mistake. Yeah, speaking of Ayaz before, he's a junior champion in Pakistan. Before moving over to Australia, he has a high break of 142 in practice, which is very, very good, and a high competition break of 132. That's so quite a very good standard in, in any country in the world. So both players are just being careful. In the past, this type of play would go on for quite a number of minutes, possibly even a half an hour. And now that games evolved to a point where the referee might give both players the option to re-rack, which means that they start that frame again I don't think Steve would want to do that, being 25 points ahead in the match. Uh, that was a, a great shot to pop that ball from there. good chance here if Steve knocks in this black he's got the red into the middle pocket which he unfortunately he's just missed that one he's given Ayaz the chance he needs to get back into this match there's plenty of reds out into the open it's just about controlling controlling his nerves controlling his emotions forgetting that he's 2-0 down. Let's just take one ball at a time. And just that composure. And I'm sure he does have that composure, mentioning the, the caliber of breaks that he's, he's capable of, of doing. Probably could have landed in a little bit better position there. He still has the, the red ball into the middle, which is next to the blue. However, he, he has to ensure that he gets prime position for the next colour. That is a good shot too. So he, he's back into prime position now. Not rushing into any shot. And 
That's unfortunate for Ayaz. It might have been a little bit of nerves that crept in there. It looks like he just stabbed at the ball rather than hit through the ball. And it's left Steve an opportunity to increase his lead and possibly finish the match off with this visit. He does have a tricky red with the rest to cut the ball into the corner. Quite a good position there for him to, I'm assuming, to take the green ball and leave himself on that red. Maybe the black ball is on. He's looking closely at it there. And it's another, another option of the risk versus reward. It's a bit more difficult shot, the black, but he's played that as good as anything. And that might be the ball that gives him the confidence to say, yep, I'm going to win this frame from here. position going for the blue he wanted to just drift past those red balls now he's going to have to play a, a lot tougher shot to pot the blue and I'm sure one of the instruments that he would need it would be called a, an extended spider or a gooseneck tool which you'll see very shortly if he does decide to take on that shot which he's getting it out of the, the rack now so it's a, quite a strange looking instrument and hence called the gooseneck for its appearance. And the shot becomes a lot more difficult bridging over a number of other balls. As you can see, it's yeah, even the good players find it difficult with the gooseneck. As luck would have it, it doesn't appear that he's left A as an opportunity for that red ball into the corner either. So Steve's opened up a handy 28 point lead midway through the third frame. He's currently leading A as 2 0. Ayers may be attempting to put a fraction of side on the ball, which he's done that. However, position-wise, he still has the opportunity to pop the pink, but it is a very risky shot, given the fact that if he misses, Steve may just have enough to finish the game off in his next visit. That was a nice little shot. Slightly gone into the pack of reds and opened one up to continue the break. And we shouldn't have any issue with this red ball into the green pocket. It looks fairly straightforward. He may have an opportunity just to leave the white ball where the red is now and to take the black ball into the corner if it's on. However, he could elect to go into the middle pocket, which he's done that. Still left himself on the black ball. He's made a good pot there. Looks like he is on a, on a red ball, however it is a little tricky again. But again, it's a matter of just going back to your basics, controlling your temperament, and trusting your own, your own action. Let's go 
So again, we see a, a shot to nothing, as we refer it to in snooker. He's, if he misses the red ball, he, he attempts to leave, leave the white ball in a position where his opponent doesn't have a good opportunity to pop the red. But in this case, he's left the red ball out. It's still a, a difficult shot for Steve. But now he's let Ayaz straight back in to hopefully get back into this match. When Ayaz is not on the snooker table, he works over at Qantas at the airport. Uh, most of the, our snooker players, we, we do have our, our regular jobs and you know, snooker's a pastime, but we still treat it seriously when the competitions are on. got within seven points of Steve. It's three reds left on the table. There's a possible 51 points. But I think at this stage, he's just concentrating on making sure he pots each ball at a time. So the red ball goes in. He's left himself a tricky shot on the pink again with the white ball close to the cushion. goes in, which makes scores level at this stage. So it's quite a close frame this one, so it could be anyone's game. AS just has to put everything into making sure this red goes in. There won't be any, any issues with position. There's plenty of colours there available. But wherever the white lands, he should be comfortably on a colour to get back down to the red ball. This could be the shot if he pots this in and gets prime position. He may have this perfect opportunity to get to 2 1. However, he's just probably rushed that shot a little bit again, and that's just maybe the pressure of the, the situation. And, uh, caliber of opponent that he's playing and maybe it's just a little less experience however he has left the yellow ball quite safe so for Steve to come in now to try and close off the frame he needs to maybe somehow develop that yellow ball after this color so I believe he'll he, he may have a go at taking the yellow along the rail, which will bring the white ball back up to the yellow spot. And should he pot that, it might be enough to close out the match for him. But percentage-wise, uh, a very good safety shot might be even better than attempting to go for a risky pot. But I can see he is taking, taking the shot on here. So had that have gone in, yes, he would have been in perfect position where the yellow would have come back onto the spot after the final red. So now we're down to the colours for the first time in this match. So score was dead level. 37 points each. It just comes down to that one opportunity or one mistake from the opponent. Um, could cost the frame. has attempted to play the snooker behind the pink ball. 
which is quite close and the referee's having a look now. So by the way Steve's hitting the ball, he's trying to swerve around so I guess that that ball wasn't directly on and he's probably just got a, a really good stroke of luck there. Sometimes that's all you need in a tournament or in a, in a game or in a match. You just need a little bit of luck and it goes a long way. That's a nice shot from Ayaz there. He didn't have much opportunity to do anything to pop the ball, to pop the yellow. However, he's played quite a good safety shot there. He, he hasn't left Steve an opportunity to win the frame from, from this visit. So again, they're, they're just trying to make their opponent, get them to make the mistake, which gives them that chance to pop the colours in to win the frame. And Ayers is in the position where he can't afford to make that mistake. If Steve makes the mistake and loses the frame, the match is still on. Yeah, Ayers has played a lovely snooker there. So this is the opportunity that he's hoping for is that if Steve misses the yellow or if he hits it, he is hoping that he leaves him in position to, to pop the yellow and take the frame. There was no problem there at actually hitting the object ball, but as I mentioned, Ayaz was hoping for that exact scenario. He's lifting the, the perfect shot to hold his nerve, compose himself. And these shots do look easy for people that probably don't know the game or don't play the game as much, but the situation, as we just see there, he's just, the nerves just got the better of him a little bit, I think, there try to concentrate too much on the position of the next ball onto the green and he's taken his mind off the, the object ball for that split second and that's the result. And it's the last thing you want to do with players of the calibre of Steve. Yellow goes in quite comfortably. Just needed that white ball to run a little bit further on. So he didn't need to use the rest. So this is his opportunity to finish the game in the next few shots and not let it go into a fourth or fifth frame. And again, so pressure can get to everyone. As we see there, he's unfortunately given four points away to Ayaz, so potting the brown ball. So the brown ball comes back onto its spot. Now Ayaz has the opportunity, he can play the shot as it is from there, or after any foul, he can elect to ask his opponent to play the shot from there as well. He just has to weigh up his options. Is it easy enough for him to play a good safety shot to let Steve make a, another mistake? And it looks like he doesn't think it is, so he's given Steve the opportunity to play the shot from there.
believe Ahaz might have been holding his breath there because that could have been a, a terrible snooker that he may have had to, to get out of. But he's got the opportunity to pot the green, which I think he's just elected to play the safety shot, and that's probably the right decision there. Had he have potted the green, he, wa he wasn't going to be able to pot the brown from there. So I think he's made a good decision there. So again, it's up to, up to this shot here. A little bit of luck that's involved with where the, where the balls stop. And again, he's got another prime opportunity to take this frame from here. Yeah, again, it's just that composure. He did get down to address the shot. Something must have just been not quite right. So he stood up again, composed himself, and as we see, he sunk the green. He looks very deliberate in his stance, he has. He's got a good technique. A good solid technique. As we see him sink the brown in. So now by the score, he's eleven points in. He's nine points in front. Beg your pardon. Should he pot this blue, that will leave him fourteen points in front, with only thirteen points left on the table. So this is a very important pot for him, which he's done well. So now. Should he pop this ball, the game's over, he's back into the match. <clears throat> he doesn't want to miss and leave Steve the opportunity to get a snooker and get back into this frame. And he's done that perfect. So that, that's, a good, that's a good finish to the frame for Ayaz. I, I think he'd be breathing a sigh of relief there and it'll give him a bit more confidence for going into frame four. Uh, we'll be back shortly for frame four.
Welcome back to the quarterfinals of the Lance Panel Snooker Championship this year at the Revington Snooker Academy. As you're aware, we're currently watching the match between Steve Mifsud and Ayaz Khan. Steve currently holds a 2-1 lead in this best of five match. Frame three saw Steve have a couple of opportunities to finish the match off then, as did Ayaz uh, earlier, um, and, it, and it went down to the, the blue ball, which Ayaz took. Pressure just mounts a little bit more into the match. Both players are hungry to, to obviously go into the semi-finals of the ranking tournament. It's a position where Steve especially has been in many, many times over. Too many to even count. Semi-finalist and finalist and winner. He's had a great career in snooker in Australia and representing himself brilliantly around the world. One of the true gentlemen of the game. And he's always happy to help out the, the up and comers in the in the club. He plays out of the Brunswick Club in Melbourne which is another strong snooker club. Been many good players over the years coming out of both these clubs that have won plenty of tournaments in Australia. So now the first opportunity goes to Steve and this is just missed that red ball into the middle. Steve didn't have too much option there to play a risky shot to hit the white ball around the, the, the bulk end of the table where the, the yellow, green and brown are. He, he just played, rolled the blue in to leave himself a middle distance red ball which shouldn't be too much drama for him to pop this in. Unfortunately he just caught the jaw again and hitting at that speed if you hit any part of the jaw, chances are it's going to stay on the table. So that's another sigh of relief for Ayaz. He's got an opportunity now to pot some in and hopefully for his sake get a lead up, a comfortable lead and control the frame from there. As I mentioned before, the situation in this game is 2 under Steve and the other three quarter finals currently we have Surav, he has a 2-0 lead over Kale. Charlie has a 2-1 lead over James and Peter Gilchrist from Singapore has, uh, they are one all with Joel Younger. So again being the best of five anything can happen in those matches. They're quite short. 
Yeah, back to the game here. Steve has got a nice red, got a nice little cannon onto the black in perfect position. Opportunity now for Steve. Let's pot the red into the corner pocket. It's naturally going to take the white ball up to the, the bulk end of the table and have the option of one of the four colours at the other end. However, he looks as though he's choosing to play this long red ball to stun for the pink. Although he's gone into the middle, it surprised me. Thought that was a, a good opportunity just to play the, the long straight ball. And the pink was clearly on into the corner pocket. However, no damage has been done. Probably left it in a position where it's a lot harder for Ayaz to, to play a good safety shot here, let alone pot a ball. It's the green ball will prohibiting from a bridge, his bridge hand laying flat on the table. He may have to raise his cue up a little bit to, to get out of it, to stop him from hitting the green with his cue, as we see there. It becomes a lot difficult, a lot more difficult to control it. However, he's done that quite well. He has left Steve the chance to pop that red into the middle pocket. It's a tricky little shot, especially given the situation of the match at the moment. The last thing Steve wants to happen is for the match to go to all. It's a mistake by Steve there. He's not only missed the red ball, and he's cannoned off the yellow, and the yellow has gone into the pocket, which gives Ayaz an extra four points for the foul. And the yellow ball comes back onto its spot. Now Ayaz has got another opportunity. He shouldn't have too many problems potting the black ball from here, but it's just a matter of getting that little bit of luck if he can cannon the white ball into the pack of reds underneath the pink and develop one red to continue the break. But he's elected to try and hold it for that bottom red at the pack, but it hasn't worked out for him, unfortunately. But luckily for Ayaz, he hasn't left Steve an opportunity to pot any. So as we see, Steve just plays a safety shot. This could be a risky shot, Ayaz taking this on. And that's the reason why he got the bad double kiss. And now he's left Steve that opportunity with the black ball over the pocket. To open up a substantial lead. Steve has a couple of options here. There are still reds available that are out, so what he's done, he's just he's going to pick off those reds that are out in open play with the blacks, and then 
you'll try and open up the rest of the pack. Uh, this, this is quite a, an easy enough shot to pot the red and it's just getting that prime position on the colour ball. Oh, that's a, a mistake I didn't think I'd see Steve do from there. And again, that's the maybe seeing the finish line a little bit. The, the nerves can creep into anyone's game. pressure of the situation. It's a lovely shot by Ayaz there. He's held the white ball in prime position for the block. Yeah, similar scenario that Steve had before here. He may have enough angle to take the white ball into the pack of reds or he just plays the percentage he's hoping for a little bit of luck there off the off the pack where the reds have split he may be on that red close to the middle however if not there are a couple of other options but they are a little bit trickier so this is where Ayers is probably going to take a, just a little bit of time just to compose himself to play the best possible shot. And again, he's just probably taking that a little bit too quick. He's left Steve a chance to pop the red into the right corner pocket, but Steve looks like he's electing to take yeah, that bottom red at the pack. And again, a shot to nothing, so there's no damage for Steve that he missed that ball. Takes the white ball back up into the safety, safety area. So Ayaz has to consider his options here where where can he play the best possible safety shot and off and off what red and I think the one that he's going for is the correct shot to try and leave that white ball as close to or on the cushion as possible to make the shot more difficult for his opponent Steve will probably play a similar shot here. May the red to the left of the pack, he may clip off that. And run the white ball safe again. Or he may he could be looking at another opportunity somewhere. It's a shot you don't see too often where the player plays the white ball onto the jaw of the middle pocket and shoots it back towards the bulk end where the yellow, green and brown are. I think he's probably lucky there, he got away with that. The, they could have landed anywhere and they could have landed over the pocket for AOs to, to get back in. It's a tough shot this one, a long, long ball. There's a possible, possible plant on that Steve's looking at. And to explain what a plant is to, to non-snooker players out there, is that when two reds are together and they're pointing in a direction close to the pocket, you can plant run one red onto the other red to sink it in. So it looks like he's, he's having a, a go there which it just didn't appear to be on. Now the opportunity, it's probably the best opportunity for Ayaz here to make quite a substantial amount of points here, make a, a good little break. The reds are well spread. So 
all he needs to do here is just compose himself, hold his nerve, and take that one ball at a time. Don't think of how many points are there to be taken. Just get back to your basics. As long as you can control that white. He needs a good bounce off the cushion, which is not too bad from there. He would have preferred for the white ball to be a bit closer to the black. But this is just about holding your nerve. And if he, he can if he can sink the next four or five reds with colours, he's in a good position to take this match to a final frame. So he's elected to screw the white ball back a few inches and landing on good position for the pink. But we'll have to get the rest out as we can see now. But there shouldn't be too many problems for him to pop his pink in and get on the other red into the middle pocket. Ooh. Again, we see a, an unfortunate miss that probably the worst time for him in the match to miss the ball. He's just got the lead back by eight points. And now the, the problem for Ayaz is that he's left Steve an opportunity to pick the ones off that he should have got. there by Steve, he's landed in prime position into the black. So back at the scores are a level again and I can see from here that Steve has a, a very very good chance to close this match out in the next few minutes. a little bit unhappy with himself there that he hasn't brought the the white ball as far into the middle of the table as he would have liked towards those reds in the middle I've just been advised on another quarter final match between Charlie Chafe and James Mifsud Charlie has taken the match out three frames to one over James and for those people who don't know, James is the brother, the younger brother of Steve. Who is also a very, very good player and tournament winner, multiple tournament winner in his own right. So it goes to show you the calibre of players in this country at the moment. Where the top ranked players can still get beaten. Back onto this match now. Steve's played a nice shot there on the pink. Just to grab the extra six points. They opened up a, a small lead of about 15 points. It's still not enough to be comfortable. But 
I believe here he'll take an opportunity to maybe pop that red into the middle, which he's done. He's done quite well, actually. red in either the middle or down in the green pocket depending where he wants to leave the white I think his best option is down in the green pocket it safely leaves him on the pink should he pot it he's opened up that that lead the red balls aren't in a, a great position to win the frame in one visit Ayers might attempt to double the red back into the opposite middle pocket there, which he's done. Very good shot. pink in to lay in nicely on the red ball which should seem comfortably oh black bead I do apologise so got a fortunate kiss there on the green ball which should seem I'd like to take the, either the brown or the blue. Possibly a fraction too much angle to pop the brown to hold it for the red. So he may elect to play the blue or even possibly the yellow if it's on. But it looks like he is going for the brown. Very, very well. So Ayers, 2-1 down. He needs to ensure that this red goes in to get onto the last colour to give himself that chance to level the match at 2-all. Just watching around the table between the shots, he seems composed enough at the moment. He's not showing too many signs of, of nerves. Just checking the score quickly just to weigh out what he needs to do. He probably doesn't know what he needs to do. It's just sometimes it's a, a little bit of a nervous habit to check the score. But, but he's got the perfect, perfect chance here to, to level the match. for the last time. And now they just go through the order of the colour clearance. The yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, black. So he's, he's got the perfect chance here to just soft shot, follow the white through to get onto the green ball. Which, which he's done quite good. So he's within five points of Steve now. He will need to pop down to the pink ball to secure the frame. And as we mentioned before, it looks easier. It looks easier to do, but 
in that situation. His heart would be beating probably 120 beats a minute at the moment. So that's that nervous look at the scoreboard thinking, yeah, he still needs the blue and the pink to win the frame. this last pink which if all goes well this match should be going into the final frame very shortly that's very well done by, by Ayaz composed himself beautifully and he's taken the match into the final frame and we'll be back shortly to watch that one Welcome back to the final frame of this match between Steve Mifsud and A.S. Khan at the Lance Panel Snooker Championship held at the Revington Snooker Academy. Steve won the first two frames and looked comfortable. Uh, Ayaz, to his credit, slowly came back and got himself back into the match by winning the, the last two frames, which is centred into the, the final one now. So we're just seeing Steve with the first opportunity to, to score first. Ayaz wouldn't be happy with that break off. players the point of no return they, they can't make any any mistakes
this is where Steve will sum up all his years of experience and knowledge and composure and dedication to the sport. And, and this is where champions excel. I'm sure half an hour ago, Steve would have been thinking he, he wouldn't be playing the fifth frame. He, he was looking quite comfortable at 2-0 up. But now that he is in the fifth frame, this is where the champions are separated from the, the other players in the tournament. He's potted the first three red balls, all with all with blacks, which opens up a 24-point lead. And he's just picking off the red balls that are open, away from the, the main pack of reds. We see him sink the fourth black, takes him to 32, break of 32. Now having said earlier that Steve was one of not a great deal of players in Australia that have made the, the possible maximum 147 break. For those of you who don't know, that's you need to pop the 15 reds, all with black ball and then the six colours equals 100 and 147 points. So at the moment, technically Steve is looking at that maximum break. He's potted the first four reds with blacks. I don't think he's probably thinking of getting a maximum at this stage. I think he's, he's, his head space is make sure that he pots that ball that he's going for at that time, at that moment. That was probably the nerves just coming into it a bit in the final frame. But fortunately for Steve, he's, he's left no option for Ayaz to, to get back into the match at this stage. Thirty-three points is a, quite a handy lead at this stage of the match. That's a very nice safety shot by Ayers. There, he's floated the white onto the the bottom cushion hasn't really left an opportunity for Steve to pot a red ball here. So I think it's a matter of, again, who's going to make the mistake of letting the opponent in. Oh, that's, a, that's a magnificent shot. Steve's just potted that from nowhere. And that's the last thing Ayaz would have expected for... for the red to be potted from there. And another good shot for Steve to just get an extra four points. There's probably not much more he's going to get there. I don't think he's landed in an ideal position, but he's still well in control of this last frame. Just while they're in this safety battle, the update on the other quarter-final matches. Joel Young has taken a 2-1 lead over Peter Gilchrist. As we mentioned before, Charlie Chafe has defeated James Mustard, 3-1. And in the final quarter-final match, we have Surav Kathari. He's taken a 2-1 lead over Kale Barrett. Back to the match. Ayaz and Steve. Just a couple.
current safety battle going on. He's caught that red ball a fraction thick, however. He's left a, a tricky pot for Ayaz. Has to bridge over the brown ball a little bit. Makes, makes the queuing just that fraction harder. And added to the pressure of the situation. He's missed that by a, a little way. And given Steve an opportunity to increase that lead again. Steve's just taking a little bit more time than he probably normally would given the fact that the uh, two all he doesn't want to let his opponent back into the match at all so he's taken on the red but however he's failed to pot it this time he has left the white ball in a quite a safety position Still an opportunity for Ayers to pop that one in the middle, that red in the middle. It's a very risky shot there under the circumstances. And he also wouldn't want to let Steve in to get another 20 points or so, which could tie up and finish the match. It's a nice pot by Ayaz, just depending where the white ends up. He may elect to play a, a safety shot here. I don't think there's a, an option to, to pot a coloured ball here with any degree of success or, or result to get on the next red. I think he's just had to elect play the best safety shot he possibly can to tie Steve up and create another opportunity for himself. Just tried to sneak the white ball behind the blue and he's caught the blue on the way. Steve may have an opportunity for that red ball down in the top left corner, which it appears that he's having a go at. And he's done that terrific. And the bonus, he's landed perfectly on a coloured ball after that kiss off the red ball. So the situation is two all the final frame of this quarter final match. Steve's opened up the commanding lead of almost 40 points. He's just deciding when he pots the brown, is he going to try and open up that pack now or is he going to take that loose red next to the yellow first, get another few points, make it that much harder for Ayaz if he gets an opportunity to get back onto the table. So he's, he's having a go. He hasn't quite connected it 
as good as he would have liked. However, he has opened up one red ball, which if he pots this in, he's got the, the coloured balls at the other end again, possibly the brown or the green. At this stage of the game where the balls are, it's, he's, he's in a very commanding position now. He just wants to hold that until the end of the match. play the safety shot, which is probably the correct decision. He's just refusing to let Ayaz have any chance to get back into this final frame. Feeling the pressure now where I think Steve can sense that. So opens up a 46 point lead. This is where Ayaz literally can't afford to make any kind of mistake. And unfortunately for him, he's, he's made another error there. He's just handed Steve an extra four points. He's just gone around to the left side of the table. He's looking at that, those two reds together lining up towards the, the right-hand corner pocket. Maybe a plant. And by the look of his demeanour, it looks as though that, that could be very close. that he's going to take this one on. He played the right shot too, that if he missed it, he played that shot to nothing, where he's, he's left his opponent not much of an opportunity to, to score here. experience is showing in this last frame. Ayaz has tried to bring the white back into the into the bulk area. He hasn't quite succeeded this time. He's given Steve a chance for a long pot. It's not, not an easy shot by any means this one. just elected to play safe again. Hit it a little bit softer than he probably preferred to. Like I said before, the closer you get to that, to leaving the white ball on the cushion or as close to it, makes it harder for your opponent. That's 
exactly what Ayaz didn't want to have happen to, to connect on the way back the white ball going back into bulk and it's connected with the red off the cushion and Steve's probably just thinking this is it, this is it. I'm going to close this out now Opens his lead up to 50 points. He's well in control of this final frame here. Cool. to be looking quite comfortable. An opportunity for the green or the brown. He may elect to take the brown here, bring the white ball back down. We've just had another quarterfinal completed. Uh, we've had Surav Kathari from India defeat Kyle Barrett, 3-1. Surav being a previous winner of this tournament a couple of years ago prior to COVID. He's making another semi-final appearance later on this afternoon. As we get back to this final frame here, Steve's just weighing up his options. Where to place the white ball. bonus will be if that red underneath the pink ball is on. But I don't think it is, otherwise Steve wouldn't be taking the shot on. Maybe looking at canning it into the, the red and the pink to develop it. Or he's just playing the safe percentage game. He's got the lead up, he doesn't need to do anything risky. Just need to pick off the, the reds one by one and making it that much harder for Ayaz now. And by the score, he's opened up a 60-point lead and there's only 59 left on the table, so we could probably safely say that Steve's going to go into the next round shortly. And again, we see a beautiful shot where he's just played off the two cushions and fallen right behind the red ball. Uh, I don't think, if when Steve misses, I don't think Ayaz is going to come back to the table. And that, that definitely puts the icing on the cake now. So Steve will go through to the another semi-final in his career. One, one of many, many... Probably the only disappointment for Steve is that his brother didn't join him in, in the semi this year. Been many a times where we've seen two Mifsids in the, in the semi-finals of lots of ranking tournaments. And there we go. Ayaz is looking at the score. 65 behind with 51 left on the table. Potentially, yeah, he's, um, he's, he's um, had enough and he said, yep, no, well done, mate. And, yep, well played in that last frame. It was a good effort by both players. A good, good match to watch and, and commentate on. 
So Steve goes into the semi-finals and then we'll be back later on in the afternoon to watch that. Until then, thank you very much for listening. Bye for now. Thank you.